everyone. And welcome back to Great New Jerusalem, Temple of Truth, where we're under the great leadership of none other than the Honorable Senior Bishop, Dr. Herman H. Davis. Hallelujah. This is the place where everybody is somebody, and Yahweh is the ruler of us all, but that is only if you want him to be. The music that is playing in the background, we do not own the rights to this music. It is the United House of Prayer for All People. Those watching via Facebook Live and our YouTube channel, Greater New Jerusalem Live, go ahead and take that quick second to like this post, comment this under this post, and share this post to your social media platforms, so that way you're not the only partaker of this pure powerful word, but also those who are your friends or even family members can also be partakers of this powerful word. Also, if you have not ready, those who are present or even at your homes, be sure to take out your cell phone devices and put it on the silent or vibrate mode to not disrupt the flow of the spirit. So that way you are able to get that which is for you from the Father on this beautiful Holy Sabbath day. Without any further ado, all those who are able to stand, may we all stand to our feet as we have our scripture coming from our very own Deacon DeAndre Davis, falling at prayer, coming from our very own Dean George Bishop. Let's receive them both as they come by saying, Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Yahweh, everybody. Scripture will be coming from the book of Matthew, which is the book of Matthews, the sixth chapter, starting at the 19th verse. Do not store up treasures for yourselves upon earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, if your eye is righteous, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is wicked, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great that darkness is. No one can be the slave of two owners, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot be a servant to both Yahweh and riches. Amen. I've read Matthew, which is Matthews, the sixth chapter, verses 19 through 24. May Yahweh add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word for the edification of our soul. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Dear Heavenly Father, we come not for shape, form, nor fashion, Father. O oh, Father, we come to praise and magnify your holy name on today, O oh, Father. Hallelujah, Father, we come to lift you up on today, O oh, Father. Just to give you the honor and the praise, O oh, Father. O oh, Father, we hold our leader up to you on every side, Father. In the mighty name of Yahshua, O oh, Father, we ask you to continue to cover him in your blood, O oh, Father. Continue to strengthen his body, O oh, Father. As your word come forth, O oh, Father, we allow it, we ask that you allow it to come. To rebuke, reprove, and reform, O oh Father, in the name of Yahshua, O oh Father. O oh Father, is there anything not like you, O oh Father? We bind it right now in the name of Yahshua, O oh Father. O oh Father, we ask you to forgive us, O oh Father, for every sin, every shortcoming, whether it be in thought or in deed, O oh Father. Have your way in the midst of your people, O oh Father. Open up the hearts of your people, O oh Father, that they may receive of your word, O oh Father. We ask you to breathe in the midst of your people, O oh Father. Right now, in the name of Yahshua, we thank you. We love you. Have your way like never before, O oh Father. In the name of Yahshua, hallelujah. hallelujah. You may be seated. Be seated. We thank Yahweh for the beautiful scripture that came forth from Deacon DeAndre and the beautiful prayer that came forth from our Dean George Bishop. Now comes a part of the service that we all can participate in, and that is our scripture shower. So if you have a scripture that is on your heart that you would like to read at this moment, we just ask that you stand to your feet so that way those at the mics can come to you and you can read the scripture that is on your heart. And if for whatever reason you are unable to stand for a certain period of time, that's all right. We just ask that you raise your hand high enough to make it visible to those at the mics so that way you can read your scripture as well. 
Proverbs, the third chapter, starting at the first verse. My son, do not forget my law, but take my instructions to heart. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Do not let mercy and truth forsake you. Tie them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your mind. Then you will find honor, high esteem, and approval in the eyes of Yahweh and man. Trust in Yahweh with all your heart, and do not lean upon your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Yahweh, and he will direct your paths. Hallelujah. Matthew, which is Matthew, the fifth chapter, and the 13th verse. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is then no longer fit for anything except to be cast out and trodden under the feet of men. You are the light of the world. A city which is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a lamp and hide it under a basket, but put it on a lampstand, and it gives light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men so they may see your righteous works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Hallelujah. First Chronicles, the 16th chapter, starting at the first verse. They brought the ark of Yahweh and set it within the tabernacle that David had erected for it. Then they sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings in front of Yahweh. When David finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people with the name of Yahweh. Then he distributed to everyone of Israel, both men and women, a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins. He appointed some of the Levites to minister in front of the ark of Yahweh, to bring to remembrance, to thank, and to praise Yahweh, the Father of Israel. Hallelujah. Matthew the fifth chapter, beginning at the 17th verse. Do not even think that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy them, but to establish them. For truly I say to you, unless heaven and earth passes away, one yod, the smallest of the letters, will in no way pass from the law until all things are perfected. Whatsoever, whosoever therefore will break one of these least of these laws and will teach men so, he will be called least in the kingdom of Yahweh. But whosoever will do and teach them, the same will be called great in the kingdom of Yahweh. For I say to you, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will certainly not enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Isaiah, the 44th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. This is what Yahweh says, who made you and formed you from the womb, who will help you. Do not be afraid. Jacob, my servant, and Jerusalem, beloved Israel, whom I have appointed, for I will pour water upon him who is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit upon your seed and my blessing upon your offspring. They will spring up among the grass as willows by the water courses. One will say, I belong to Yahweh. And the same will call himself with the name of Jacob. The other will sub subscribe with his hand and write, I belong to Yahweh and surname himself with the name of Israel. This is what Yahweh, the King of Israel and Redeemer, Yahweh of hosts says, I am the first and I am the last. And except for me, there is no source of power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs, the eighth chapter, starting at the first verse. Does not wisdom cry out? Does not understanding raise her voice? She stands on the top of the heights beside the way where the paths meet. She cries out by the gates of the entry of the city at the entrance of the doors, proclaiming to you 
O oh man, I call out, and my plea is directed to all mankind. O oh, you simple, understand wisdom. You fools, be of an understanding mind. Listen, for I will speak excellent things. I will open my mouth with right things. Hallelujah. Isaiah, the 44th chapter, beginning at the 7th verse. And who, as I will foretell, and set it in the order for me, since I appointed the ancient people, and the things which are coming and will come, let them foretell them. Do not fear, nor be afraid. I have not told you from that time and have declared. You are my witnesses. Is there a source of power except me? Truly, there is no other rock. I know not one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is the word of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let's give Yahweh a praise as our praise and devotional servers come forth. Let's receive them by saying hallelujah. Praise Yahweh, everybody. Praise Yahweh, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For this is the day that Yahweh has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. We bring you greetings from Greater New Jerusalem, Temple of Truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Under the leadership of our own senior bishop, Dr. Herman H. Yeah. Davis. Hallelujah. For I will bless Yahweh at all times. And his praise shall continually oh. be in my mouth. Hallelujah. My soul shall make yeah. a boast in the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. For he is good all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What you know about Yahshua? He's, He's all right. What you know about my Yahshua? He's all right. And he's all right, all right. He's all right. And he's all right, all right. He's all right. Oh, what you know about Yahshua? He's all right. What you know about my Yahshua? He's all right. And he's all right, all right. He's all right. Oh! 
Put your hands together and give him all the praise. Him all the glory and him all the honor is him. And him alone and all is worthy. And all is due. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you want to go higher? She said, I need to go higher. I have to go higher. Well, put your mind on him. And it's a guarantee that you will go higher, that you must go higher, that you have to go higher. Hallelujah. Just say hallelujah. If you don't understand it, just say hallelujah. hallelujah. That's his language. That's his word. That's him talking to him. Just say hallelujah. 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 How often should we say it? From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, Yahweh's name is worthy to be praised. For I will bless Yahweh at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in Yahweh, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify Yahweh with me, and let us exalt his name together. For Yahweh is in his holy temple, let all the earth keep silent before him.
for Yahweh is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Yahweh is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Let the entire household of prayer say, Amen. Make a joyful noise unto Yahweh, all ye lands. Serve Yahweh with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that Yahweh, he is Father. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For Yahweh is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Yahshua, teach us to pray as you taught your disciples. And he taught us in this manner.
Father, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep thy law. Father, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep thy law. Father, have mercy upon me and incline my heart to keep thy law. household of prayer say amen <laughs> hallelujah let's give Yahweh a hand praise give him the praise and the honor and the glory for inclining our hearts to keep his law one more chance and one more opportunity to get it right as the voice of Yahweh come with the beautiful selection hallelujah
Come on, we can do better than that. Let's give the voices of Yahweh another round of applause for always singing to the glorification of Yahweh with purity of heart. Hallelujah. How many of you know how excellent and how wonderful his name is? I don't know about you, but it was a time where I called him God. I called him Lord. I called him all, everything but his name. But when you know what his name is, it just brings another thing within you that just appreciates him that even more. It gives you more power, more authority when you know that his name is above all names. And that name is Yahweh. There is no name as excellent as his. So we thank the voice of Yahweh for that beautiful selection. And before we get to the part that we all have come for, and that is the word, we're going to first call up and have our announcements by none other than our very own sister, Willette Fields. Let's receive her as she comes by saying, hallelujah. Praise Yahweh, saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome each of you to Greater New Jerusalem, Temple of Truth, where our pastor and founder is none other than the Honorable Senior Bishop, Dr. Herman H. Davis. We are located at 366 Washington Point Drive in the city of Indianapolis, state of Indiana. This is the place where everybody is somebody and Yahweh is the ruler of us all, if you want him to be. We hold all those who are in need of our prayers high. We remember Mother Cynthia Taylor, Mother Eva Banks, Missionary Charlotte Clemens, Sister Stephanie Black, Sister Christine Simmons, Brother Ray Jackson, Brother Tyrone Davis, Brother Maxwell Banks, and all who seek our prayers. We invite you to take part in any and all services, and our services are as follows. Friday night opens our Sabbath with a 7.30 p.m. service. Youth Sabbath school at 10.15 a.m., Sabbath school at 11 a.m., and our main Sabbath service at 12 noon. We close the Sabbath <coughs> excuse me, with a 6 p.m. service. Wednesday Bible class is youth at 6.30 p.m. and adult at 7.30 p.m. The word unwrap every fourth Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. <coughs> Please remember to watch the weekly recording of the Divine Enlightenment podcast on YouTube and all podcast streaming platforms. We also encourage you to engage with us in our new segment, Enlighten Me, and join the discussion. Hallelujah. April 22nd begins the Feast of Passover. Hallelujah. We will, we will be in all black that day. It will run from April 22nd to April 30th. We'll go right into the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It will be May 1st until May 7th. May 4th is the official day, and we will be in all white. Your sheave and love offering is due that day as well. Immediately following the Feast of Unleavened Bread, our services will change for the summer months. Friday Sabbath evening service will begin at 8 p.m. Saturday Sabbath night service will begin at 7.30 p.m. Hallelujah. Our services can be viewed on Facebook or here in person in the temple. Blessings to each of you, and I give introduction to our assistant pastor, Elder Leonard Scott Jr. for the Litany of Truth. Please put your hands together as he comes. Sister Willett Fields for those beautiful announcements. And now comes another part of the service that we all can participate in, and that is the reading of our Litany of Truth. It can be found in your monthly bulletins in the month of April on the fifth page right next to the Sabbath responsive reading. If you, have, if you do not have one, please feel free to let one of our ushers know, and they'll be more than gracious enough to get you a program. I will read the first sentence. You will read the second and we'll alternate until we get to the last sentence on which we'll read as one body. And as always, let us read with the power and the authority that's been given to each and every one of us. Hallelujah. I have now come to know that in me is the power of my Father. The move of my father Yahweh has given me all ability to move and have my being. I must align myself with all he is to the very best of my ability, knowing that this requires a willing mind, and I am willing. 
I must align myself with the principles of my father. And in that, I will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost within me. Our elder brother, Yahshua the Messiah, came to give us a visual of the things our father desires of us. And the word became flesh and dwells among us. In my father, there is nothing but power to love and overcome all that comes our way in our consciousness. I am excited for such truth. And in this truth, I will live, move, and have my being. For me and my father, we are one. So no matter what, who, when, or where, I am going to serve him with my whole heart, allowing nothing to hinder me, for it will be only me who will be hindered. My soul says yes, and I am going to become all that my father created me to be. I must let the world go together. Me and my father, Yah, we are one. I must guard all that I have and am becoming, for if I don't, it will be taken. So I will stand on this truth and return back to the foundation that stands sure, for I am created in his image and likeness. Hallelujah, written by the Honorable Senior Bishop, Dr. Herman H. Davis. The scripture says, how can you hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he has been sent? The word also comes in in the same scripture and it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Father. Well, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we have a word-bearing man in our presence. We have a prophet within our presence. We have a teacher, a preacher, a leader, a guidance counselor. I present to you and introduce to others none other than our leader, our very own honorable senior bishop, Dr. Herman H. Davis. Receive him as he comes by saying hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Almighty a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Almighty a praise in the house. Hallelujah. We love him. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a praise. Hallelujah. We do love him. Happy Sabbath to all of you. Amen. As you be seated, amen. We love him. Amen. And we bless him. Amen. We're so grateful. Amen. To be here. Amen. And I'm so honored to be here. Amen. And see all of you. Amen. On this Sabbath day. Amen. We're remembering all of those that are in the need of prayer. Amen. As well as ourselves. Amen. I tell you. Amen. We want to remember Sister Christine's sister. Amen. Her name is Bert. Amen. In New York. Amen. Let's keep her lifted in prayer. Amen. Because I know the power of prayer. I don't know about you, but I know what prayer can do. Amen. Hallelujah. And I bless him for each and every one of you. We're so glad to uh, be here. Amen. And to all of you, uh, this great choir. Amen. The voices of Yahweh. <laughs> Amen. And these great musicians, Brother Aiden Bullock and Brother Demarcus Jones, Elder Demarcus Jones, and to our ambassador, amen, and assistant pastor, amen, Elder Leonard Scott, and to our assistant pastor, Elder Regina Bishop. Amen. We are so grateful to see so many of you here today. And I am always excited about being in the house of prayer. Yeah. To all of you that are listening on Facebook and YouTube and wherever yeah. you're listening at, we come to let you know that this is the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the Sabbath. Yeah. Amen. And I am 
I am so grateful for truth. Amen. And knowing that this is the day. Amen. We're so blessed to have so many of you here. Amen. I am so honored to be in the presence of the Almighty. Amen. You really don't know what a lot of people go through in the course of a day, let alone the course of a week. Amen. So it is a blessing to be here. Amen. I thank you for the healing that's in the room. Amen. Thank you for the joy that's in the room. Hallelujah. Amen. And I thank him for a renewing, amen, of our minds. Amen. A renewing of our spirits. Amen. Because I don't know about you, but every now and then I need renewing. Amen. I need my, I need my joy restored. I, I need my praise restored. And I'm just, I just need him. Amen. I don't know about you, I can't do nothing without him. Amen. We are so grateful for the word last night Hallelujah. that Sylvia brought. Amen. I went home talking about that word. I woke up this morning thinking about that word. Amen. I, I am a lover for the word. Amen. Amen. And you can tell when people have studied the word, the verses, when people just read something and get up here and deliver it. Amen. And it makes a difference when you study it. Amen. For the word said, study to show thyself self approve unto God. Amen. Work may need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. So I know it's a little warm in here, but I also know we don't live right. Amen. It's going to be hotter than this. Hallelujah. So enjoy the fans. Amen. Right now, I can't turn the air conditioning on me. Amen. Because that bug thing that was going around, that cough that has lingered. Amen. So when there's air on me, I, it gets me to going. So I have to stand up here like a rotisserie chicken. Amen. Hallelujah. And believe it or not, as hot as it is out there, it's hotter up here. You wouldn't believe it. But it is hot up here. Amen. But we make it through it. Yes, sir. Amen. We're going to draw your attention to the word. I'm going to use some readers today. Amen. So I'm going to get Elder Jones to get Isaiah 59 and 19. Elder Cook, get Isaiah 62 and 10. And Elder Scott, get 2 Timothy 1. 1 through 14. Amen. If this is ice in this, oh, there's nothing in this. Hallelujah. I laugh because the greatest thing, amen, is this your sister, Myrna? Is that Gail? Hi, baby. I love you. I don't pray for you so much that I think I know you. <laughs> and I'm so honored to have you here with us. This is the place where you are somebody. Amen. And I just want to hug you and I will before the service is over. And I'll give you a handkerchief. Amen. Amen. We're glad to have you. I'm glad to have all of you here. Amen. If I don't know you, the brother there. Amen. Bless you, my brother. Amen. You, uh, are you Brother De Deacon DeAndre's friend? Amen. Grateful. I mean, he's been talking to me about you for the last two weeks. Amen. Ain't that something? Amen. Amen. Y'all went to school together. And it's a blessing that you can live a life that somebody wants to follow you to church. Amen. I'm so honored to have you with us. Amen. And this is a place where you are truly somebody. Amen. Amen. I'm so honored to be in the presence of the Almighty and i just been talking about all of y'all. I talk about Jake this morning. And I'm, I'm proud of the young brothers. Amen. And the young sisters. Amen. And the saints. Amen. When I say young, I mean us who's there. When I talk about old folks, I'll talk about Emily Clayton and them. Amen. But when I talk about young folks, I talk about us. Amen. 
Amen. Ain't that right, Ashley? You, you, you've been inducted into this Hall of Fame, so, amen. It, it goes quick. Amen. One minute you're with them, and then the next minute you're with us. Amen. In the book of Isaiah, amen, Isaiah 59 and 19, I'm going to ask whoever has it to read. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19. So they will reverence the name of Yahweh from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When our enemies will come in like a flood, the spirit of Yahweh will lift up a standard against them. Hallelujah. I, you don't have to stand up because I'm, I got quite a bit of scriptures I'm going to give you. My message today is holding to the standard. Holding to the standard. I, um, I am one that is a stickler for what I believe. And if I'm not going to stand in it, I'm not going to believe it. And if I'm going to believe it, I'm going to do all I can to stand in it. I was talking to one of the saints on yesterday. and We were talking about the various religions and the order most religions um, deal with. And we were talking about the, the Jews and how they... Uh, how they live their lives. And many of you don't even know that most of them live their lives according to uh, the five books of the Old Testament, which is called the, the Pentateuch, the five books of the law, the Torah. And we were talking yesterday and they were saying how Jews, most of them, a lot of them, don't even uh, sleep in the same bed with their wives until it's time for them to procreate. And most of the males, the fathers, after their male child reached a certain age, the father takes the male child and train the male child. I, I know one today, to this very day, that his father owns a plethora of businesses all over the U.S. And now he has taken his son after his bar mitzvah, and he's taken his son to all of those businesses, teaching him how to run them. For the most part, Christianity is the weakest link. I am not a Christian. I will not be compared to a Christian because we were never designed to be Christians. We were designed to be the people of Yah. the heirs as well as the joint heirs. <laughs> Isaiah, one of the greatest prophets of his time and even now, dealt with a lot of things that Israel, the children of Israel, the chosen ones of Yah, found themselves in rebellion from one thing to another. And as all of us, at one point or another, all of us that have been reared, and yet now you're rearing, the purpose is, or it should be, that you're wanting to instill morals into your children. As your parents, some of them instilled morals into you. Some were blessed to have morals that went beyond morals and it became a standard. And some of us, our parents, some of you, 
your parents gave you the very best they had to offer. When we deal with the word, whether it be the book of Yahweh or the KJV, the word itself is designed to establish within us a standard. Because we lost our standard. And when you, as a man, number one, lose your standard, you lose your dignity. When you, you, as a woman, lose your standard, you lose your dignity. The grace and mercy of the word is so designed that all of us at one point or another in our lives have lost our standard. We have fallen. We have fallen for one reason or another. Every one of us in this church right now have done something that we have no business doing. We have said something that we had no reason. Y'all can say amen. 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 See, this is not a perfect church, and you all know that. And if you all think you would have made it, then you need to leave. Amen. Because ain't none of us in here perfect. Am I right about it? Amen. We're here to get it together because we know we haven't gotten it together. Ain't that right? And that should make us all get excited because, amen, we, we, we're dressed up and we all look very nice, but our, this right here is still messed up. Amen. So the word, amen, the word has been structured to put something back in us that we've lost. Now, I know you think you have a standard because you go to church, you pay your tithes and all of that, but when it comes to your spiritual self, it goes beyond that. My grandmother, bless her heart, I love her dearly, she always made sure that I knew who I was. And in knowing who I was, she always told me, don't settle for no more than who you are. Now that sounds real good. And it was good, but sometimes along the way I settled for less than who I was. To be with somebody, to be in the crowd, to be in the mix of people, to even be with family. And I don't know about you, but a lot of people have really lessen themselves just to fit in with family. Amen. Amen. Just to be the one to fit in. People have lessened themselves just to have relationship. In your mind, in your subconscious mind, you know you're better than this, but your flesh has caused you to deal with things Hey, that's not you. So the ultimate of the job is, is that the Father loves us. He loves us so much that he created us in the likeness of his image and put his breath into us, making us then a living soul. Bear with me. So when I began to listen and look at the word that was dropped into my spirit, and that is standard, it came to me in this way. So many people speak things that they're not. They say that they are Sabbath keepers, but they're really not. They say even in their testimonies, and I'm not judging you, but we say for him we live move and have our being and I really don't think we understand what that really means but what that they're saying that above and beyond anything he is first he is foremost and he is forever so the ultimate of this is when I looked up the word standard I wanted to know what it uh, the standard really meant 
Amen. Because we all have levels of standards. Amen. So when I say standard, if I just say a standard, then you all are going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm standing in my standard. Amen. They got people on the streets. That's their standard. They got thieves. That's their standard. But there's a standard here that is to be put into us to make us the children of Yah. The definition of standard is a level of quality or attainment. So what we're talking about this afternoon is a level of quality. Because really, if we would ask you the truth, a lot of us have had more moments of feeling like we're nothing than we had moments that we felt like we were something. And then here, I'm going to blow you away. A lot of you felt like you were something because you had hair and nails and eyelashes and still never realized that you were living in fakeness. Now, as much as those things make us feel good, a haircut to a man makes him feel good. But in the event that he cannot get a haircut, In the event that she cannot get the hair, the nails, and the lashes, there's got to be something there that still establishes in you who you are. So, for the most part of us, we have been programmed in so many ways from slavery. And we say we're no longer slaves, but we really are. We are still slaves. I listened the other day to the commercials that come across the TV. Have you ever listened to them? How many commercials say, consult your doctor? Huh? Everything. Nobody, nobody's ever, I, I have not yet seen a commercial say, consult the father. I am not. I saw so many medicines prescribed that will heal this, but if you listen, it kills everything else. I look at television and I see that it pro is programmed to program us. Or better yet, to keep us programmed. So the more things program us, the less our standard is. Because it removes the quality of our stand. So in the midst of this, Isaiah the great prophet is now telling the children of Israel, and this is after the warning. You know, Israel had to be warned from the first to the 39 and a half chapter. I done said that so much, I should be able to say that without even saying it. Hallelujah. Because Israel was so stuck on what they thought. Now, I know some of you all are like that even now. I deal with you as members. You're stuck on what you think. It's your principle. It's your thoughts. Like today, today is the Sabbath, but you're somewhere else. You being there justifies it by saying the Father is to understand it. But have you ever thought that he doesn't have to understand it? Because he said, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Holy means clean. Holy means clean, means your thoughts, regardless of what it is we're encountering. And we all, don't get me wrong, we all are going through something right here. Every one of us is faced with some type of crisis. 
So as much as you're going through your crisis, don't sit here and think that you're the only one. And believe you me, if you got yours today and the other fella don't have theirs, my grandmother said, just keep living. Because just like joy comes to you, trials and tribulations also must come. Everything that we are dealing with right now is for the making of us. Because when things become too comfortable, we become too laid back. We become too self-reliant. Confident in ourselves. So every now and then something has to be done to pull the rug from under us to make us call his name. Not from the lips. See, if the rug ain't pulled from under you, you're just praising. Hallelujah. But when hell knocks on your door, it makes you call him like never. Before. And I don't know about you. I hear a lot of parents talking about their children being ungrateful, and they are. But the reason why they're ungrateful is because they've never had to encounter anything. You ask them what they want to eat. We never had that privilege. We ate what was set before us, and if we didn't like it, we found a way to make it through the night without eating. Do you like this? And do you like that? And you, you want some Jordans and some Air Force Ones? And I'm not a tennis shoe person, so don't y'all get me. If I call the wrong type of tennis shoe, because I'll call Converse and Buddies and plastic shoes and everything. Because I'm not one. I don't do tennis shoes. Amen. So the father does not do us like we do our children. Used to be in my grandmother's time, in my mother's time, we were their children. Now your children are your friends. Hallelujah. So because they are your friends, you do things to make them happy. Instead of doing things to establish a standard. Now, one thing you've got to understand, Ashley, is that your young boy is going to become a young man. And he's either going to look for somebody or be somebody to stand and have a standard for himself. Or he's going to look for somebody to be his mom. Hallelujah. Y'all got to know the difference between a wife and a mama. Hallelujah. A man has never been designed to take down. But when he's not sure of himself, I see it all the time on TV. You wouldn't believe how many arguments I get into with TV. Don't I, Elder Scott? I have to turn it off. You about the biggest dummy I ever seen. Come on. What is your problem? Come on. That's what I asked. Then I realized in reading the word, when you don't have a standard, you will fall for anything. So what makes life exciting to you is the things that are temporal. Not things that are eternal. So Isaiah now has warned Israel because they had done so many things against the will of the Father. Now, I know you say you have it, but that's not the truth. He woke us up this morning, and as much as you want to sit here and go through your sob sad stories, do you not know you didn't have to be woke up? When I start thinking about what I could complain about, I think about somebody in worse shape than I am. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the truth. My legs hurt. Yeah, they do, but somebody don't even have legs. And anybody that's anybody, anybody that's been around anybody that has had amputation, they feel pain where there is nothing. It's psychological. So, in the midst of this, now Isaiah, amen, get to read that again, amen. Isaiah, the, the 59th chapter in the 19th verse, it says, what now? He's telling Israel now. He's giving a prophecy to Israel. Now, mind you, everybody does not want to follow this. People will follow you, but they don't mean, that doesn't mean they're listening to you. That's the question. How many of you are in here listening to the message? Because really, it, it's okay to come, you know, you could go downtown and, and to a concert and you can, you know, I went to a gospel concert and they had an open bar. So y'all y'all got it going on now. Come on. I, I, I didn't want to seem like I was an old-fashioned saint, but I'm trying to figure out these people getting happy and shouting and praising the Father in the hour. And I know he has no respect of a person, but I wanted to know how much of the glass was helping him. And then the spirit of the almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because truth be told, the father don't need no help. That's why he told us it's holiness or hell. We are the ones that have invested ourselves under the hand of the slave master by continuing to be held to the things of this world. The things of this world are temporal people. Your fun is only for a little while. And what you call fun ends up as a tragedy. I used to say, I just want to have fun. And my grandmother used to say, you don't know what fun is. Fun will become your nightmare. Anybody's been there? Started out with just having fun, and it became a nightmare. And look at where you are today. Out of nowhere, he kept you. You really shouldn't have been kept, but he did. Did he keep you there for you to go back and have fun? No, ma'am. No, sir. He only brought you out of that so you can tell somebody else, don't go there. Don't go there. Read for me. Isaiah 59, 19. So they will reverence the name of Yahweh from the west. Wait a minute. So they will reverence. Reverence means, uh, Maria, reverence means they will honor. They will honor. Now, it didn't say the name of God. And let me tell you why. Because there's too many gods. Your fun has been mixed up with gods. The God of lust. The God of sex. The God of drugs. The God of party. The God of even wanting to look beautiful. Which is called the goddess of vanity. You call yourself in love and you're really not. You're just under the goddess of Diana. I never will forget one time in my life I came across a lady that was demon possessed. And they called me for out of town to come and see. And I went. And to make a long story short, when I went into their house, when I finally got there, it was, it was evening. And the person that I was supposed to go see, I went to see their mother. And the, their, their child was in the house, but she was upstairs. And she came downstairs and she said to me, oh, you come to get rid of me. And I sat there and I just looked at her and I didn't see anything. Now she's got rollers in her hair and 
all of that. Then she said, oh, okay, I'll be back. And I'm sitting there talking to the mother, wondering, what is she coming back with? Well, to do, I wasn't scared, but I was wise. Yeah. You ain't going to tell me you got a demon and you be back. And I'm going to sit here like I'm going to have a picnic and not be prepared. See, that's what's wrong with people today. Y'all so caught up in prayer that y'all don't watch. Nor do you fight. That's what I understand about sanctified folks is that you don't fight. Everything is kumbaya. How do you kumbaya a demon? You got to rebuke a demon. You got to step on the devil's head and proclaim the word of our father. I told Sister Candace the other day, I said, I ain't going to call nobody's name, but I said, there are some people in our church I would dare not go to war with because I would lose. I got to kill the enemy and they out there trying to talk to him. That ain't how this works. So, they have to reverence the name of Yahweh, and that is because there's only one father. There's only one sustainer. There's only one deliverer. There's only one mountain mover. There's only one restorer of the peace and joy in our souls. There's only one. But we have been introduced to God. And all of us are used to gods of one thing or the other. That's why I tell y'all in a minute, I don't want you to think that I'm a perfect preacher. Oh, the pastor can't. No, no don't you do that to me. Because I'm only able to talk to you because of what I've been through. Now, some things you've been through that I ain't been through, but hell is hell. Some can be hotter than the other, but hell is hell. Hell always starts off with heat. Y'all didn't get that, did you? It's just the deeper you go, the hotter it gets. But it'll never end up with air conditioning. So it says, from the what now? From the west. From the, from the what? Verse 19, so they will reverence the name of Yahweh from the west. From the west. And his glory from the rising of the sun. From the rising of the sun. Now, the reason why they, they wanted to talk about the rising of the sun, because the rising of the sun came up in the east. And the setting of the sun went down in the west. Y'all don't get this, do you? So when the sun rose... They would reverence his name. And when the sun went down, they would reverence his name. And the other day, we had the opportunity to go all the way back over 2,000 years ago and see how darkness was upon the face of the deep. Oh, y'all don't see that, did you? Y'all didn't get that one, did you? We was all looking at the eclipse, but we didn't realize that it told us in the very beginning that darkness was upon the face of the deep. So he just gave us a replay. No matter who you are, who you think you are, how much you have, you can still be in a place that darkness is upon the face of the deep. I don't know, when I saw it, I saw at the tip end of the eclipse, there was something pink or red that was out, that was just standing out all by itself. They said there was a planet, amen, but I knew I just saw a difference. Now, the joy of the eclipse this time is that in Genesis, darkness completely covered the sun. No eclipse has been able to completely cover. Because on the outer perimeter of darkness was light. Ain't that something right there? 
Look at how the Father is telling you that no matter how much darkness you've been in, on the outside, there is hope. My, my, my. I'm not talking about on the outside at the world, but I'm talking about if you come in here, no matter what you have been through, there's hope. Can somebody say, there's hope for me? There's some light on the outside of all of this darkness. Say hallelujah like you mean. Bless him. So it says from the west to the what? And his glory from the rising And his of the glory. Now, 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 glory is something that we all got to learn how to give because glory means reverence, excitement, but with gratitude. Amen. A lot of people are excited, but they're not grateful. Look at your children. Hallelujah. Gratefulness is something that has to be embedded into you because gratefulness brings on humility. If you are not grateful, you're not humble. And you cannot be humble without being grateful. That's why right now all of you should be grateful. Why? Grateful that he kept me. Grateful that he watched over me. Grateful that I could have died last night. Grateful that when I smoked whatever it was, it could have took me out like somebody else, but it didn't. So I'm grateful that he has kept me. Boy, I wish I had somebody to know what I was talking about. See, when you're grateful, you just give him a praise. You're not deep with grateful. You're not sitting around with your nose up in the air like praise him. Nah, when you are grateful, you get down deep dirty in it and tell him I thank you. Because if it had not been for you on my side. Hallelujah. Amen. I heard, I think it was Sister Emily White is talking about uh, being privileged. Amen. Nah, I'm not privileged. Amen. He just keeps me. Amen. I'm not privileged by far. He just keeps me. And because he does, I'm just grateful. Anybody else grateful in here today? I thank you. I was with somebody that really didn't have me at that the best of the heart. I'm grateful. See, we've got to learn to be grateful because when we're grateful, when we wake up and be able to see one another, then we are excited. Not arrogant. Not I'm this being. I should be here. I shouldn't be here. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I shouldn't be here. I should be dead in my grave. Hallelujah. Or I could have been mentally messed up. I could have smoked something that messed my mind up. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all acting like y'all ain't been there. Hallelujah. A bullet went somewhere and it could have been for me. But for some apparent reason, they, uh, my car got stopped at the stoplight. I got mad about it because the traffic was backed up or the train was coming. Never did I realize that the father was keeping me from something that could have took my life. Glory. Help us somebody. Oh, do you see how ungrateful we are? I want to be so grateful that when I was able to step through, I, I looked at Tamara come through the door, and I mean, she just came through excited, ready. Where's my seat at? She didn't know I was watching her, but I, I saw her on the camera. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't come here to see you. Praise him, sister. Praise him, brother. But I'm on my way because I need a word. I need something that's going to keep me being grateful. And to be grateful, sometimes you've got to be knocked down. Because sometimes we as a people think we're all of that. Hallelujah. 
to the and his glory from to, the from the rising of the sun from the rising yeah. of the sun now i want you to understand the rising of the sun had more than one significant yeah. the rising of the sun was when the sun came up in the east and the rising of the sun was when yahshua the messiah oh comes up in your soul <laughs> Uh, that, that, that's, that's, that's why this church don't do no Easter. Amen. They talking about the resurrection. They're liars from the pits of hell. Amen. You can't celebrate a resurrection until the rising of the sun. That means a word got to be put in you, and you've got to allow it to allow you to allow him to rise. Somebody going to get with me in a minute, Ashley. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got a little way to go, y'all. Go ahead. When our enemies will come in like a flood. Wait a minute now. He could have said, no enemies is coming in. Yeah. People tell you to join the church, your luck will change. That's a lie. Your luck, he, we don't, there is a God of luck, but you can't join this church and meet that God because yeah. we don't worship that God. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you can go to the boat, the casino, and all of them, and them gods of luck are right around there. Uh -huh. And that's where you join. Yes, but here, you meet the Father. Yes. His name is Yahweh. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 And beside him, there is no other. Uh -huh. Here, you declare unto yourself that the Father is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Hallelujah. Here, you come to get your soul right. You bring 304, but you go out 777. Y'all know what 304 is. <laughs> Can we get an amen? Oh, boy. Wasn't some of y'all 304? Quiet in the room. And let me tell you, I was there when you got delivered. Hallelujah. Don't forget where you came from. Because you may meet another 304. And you got to tell that other 304, he did it for me. Oh, come on, somebody. He'll do it for you. You only here because he wants the world to know there is yet hope. Three or four don't mean you stood on the corner. But some of you are three or fours in the club. Uh, I know y'all don't want to say man to that one. But it's okay. Let's move on. Hey, read. The spirit of Yahweh will lift up a stand. Wait a minute. When your enemy. Now always remember your enemy is not someone that you don't know. So it's the thing that is already in you that becomes the enemy to you. Your heart becomes your enemy. Your children become your enemy. Your money becomes your enemy. Your job becomes, oh, y'all don't want to say amen. Hallelujah. You've got to understand when the enemy come in like a flood. Your children become overwhelming. You find yourself praying for them to be safe more than you to be saved. Ain't that something? And the truth of the matter is, your children got to be released too. Faith has got to find them. And no matter who you are, how good of a mother, father, sister, or brother you are, every one of us have got to meet the enemy for ourselves. The thing is, whether the enemy is going to take you out or whether you're going to have something in you that will lift up a standard, not for it, not in favor of it, but against it. Am I talking to somebody in here? Glory. 
You didn't come here just to look good and smell good and talk about Sabbath. Saturday is a Sabbath. You came here because we got to enforce the standard. Because you got to make it. You came here. You're here. Gail, you're here for a reason. I have been here for a long time. I knew your ugly sister for many a year. That's my baby. As my child there, hallelujah, she's not ugly either. She's beautiful. Right. Amen, amen. That's Harriet Tubman. That's what I call her all the time. I say, Harriet, girl, I thought you was gone. You still around. <laughs> but the blessing is, is that when other folks condemned her, Come on. Come on. I'm talking about Myrna, your yeah. sister, yeah. he brought her to a place. Yeah. Now, the place that he brought her to, he applied the scripture in the time of trouble. I'll hide you. Now, y'all don't know what being hidden is all about, but sometimes when you're lost, when you don't know which way to go, when you got caught up, you need somebody to hide you. In the time of trouble. Sometimes we don't even know we're in trouble. We think we're among friends and we're among enemies. But in the time of trouble, he shall hide you in his pavilion, in the secret. He'll take you just like you are and won't let nobody touch you until he gets through working with you. Hallelujah. Some of the enemy come in like a flood. Now, y'all don't know what a flood is, do you? You, you? you ever thought why I used the illustration of a flood? I don't care how much you try to block water. You can't block water. Your hands can be as tight as they want to be, but water will still seep through. So this tells me that this enemy is going to be so tough that it's going to even seep through your prayer life. It's going to seep through your praise and worship service. It's going to seep through your love. It says when the enemy come in. Like a flood. Bring. The spirit of Yahweh will lift Wait a minute. Now, not any spirit. That's what we got to be careful with. We got to be, we got to watch and see what we working with. What you working with, Ashley? What spirit? Come on. Yeah. Now, there are all types of spirits. And you all are familiar with them. Am I right about it? On, How many of you wake up one morning full of hell? <laughs> Anybody here? Yeah. Want to be truthful? Thank you. I don't know what's wrong with me. That means you need to start getting you together. I mean, we all have bad days. And I wake up sometimes with my hair off. Amen. But I just have to realize I don't have no hair no way. And get it together. Because really the truth of the matter is, what are we going to accomplish by being angry and nasty? The only reason why we're that way is because the enemy is, is standing up. And, and the spirit of the almighty is showing us ourselves. We can't stand it. Boy, I, I, I got a long way to go with this message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when the enemy come in, when, W-H-E-N, so don't sit here and come into the house of prayer thinking that the enemy is not coming in. The enemy is coming in because the enemy lives within. The enemy lives there. Our mission is to get her out. And you can't just stand there and say, get out, get out. She going to look at you and say, no, no. 
and she going to do you like you do her. Girl, you know I ain't going nowhere. But you know that word y'all use in the street streets. B. <laughs> I know y'all ain't seen no pastor like this, have you? I didn't say the word. I said the alphabet. <laughs> Amen. Y'all know that's a general conversation. That's a word. Now, Miss B, B, used to be you call somebody that, you fight. Now it's just a general word. That's your name. See how we've discredited ourselves. That's because there's no standard in us. We have become comfortable being considered or identified as a female dog. Oh, you here, Elder Seymour. Oh, the police is here. He'd have made it. Anyway. <laughs> Read. The spirit of Yahweh will lift up a standard. The spirit of Yahweh. Now, you got to know the spirit. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to know the spirit. For the word said, know the spirit, try the spirit. By the spirit, whether it be the spirit of Yahweh. Now, you got to know the difference between your spirit. And, and the only way you're going to know the difference between your spirit and the spirit of Yahweh is that you get into the will of the Father. That's why this church will never be a dating church. I, oh, I roll over in my grave if that's what y'all think y'all going to turn this into. I'm going to come there and find me a man like hell you are. You'll come here and find a man. That's the only man I got to introduce to you. Amen. Whether you male or female, yes, sir. there's only one man that you're going to get to fall in love with. Yes, and that's him. Yes, sir. Through me. Yes, sir. Ain't that something? Yes, so that means you got to fall in love with the leader. Right. I didn't say lust. Right. I said in love with the leader. Right. Because that is the heart of the father. Boy, I just love us. Yeah. She all right? She all right? Okay. Boy, I know how that feels. Yeah. Amen. Come on, Reed. She wants some water or something? Okay. The spirit of Yahweh will lift up a standard against them. The spirit of Yahweh will lift. Now, come on, somebody say lift. 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 Now, lifting is important. Now, lifting requires work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. David said, I will lift my eyes. Yeah. Yeshua said, if I be lifted yeah. from the earth, I'll draw. Yeah. So lift means in order for you to come to a better way of thinking, you got to do something yeah. with the way you are. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you want to come out of something, you've got to lift yourself out. If you want him to save you, you've got to lift him up. If you, got to, if you want your, your vision to change, you've got to lift your eyes to something better. If you keep looking at dirt, then dirt you're going to get. Remember, this is not the God of luck. This is our father. Read. Isaiah 62 and 10. Isaiah 62 and 10 says, pass through. Pass through. Pass through the gates. Wait a minute. Now he says pass through. Can we say pass through? Pass through. Now you did that this morning. Come on. You did. All of you that's in here has passed through the gates. Yes. Ain't that something? I know I said ain't. That's okay. Ain't that something? Boy, you passed through the gates. Now, how many of you were glad to pass through the gates? I was. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. See, be thankful. See, see you got you to gotta shut you off. You can't bring 
everything in here. Some things you got to lay here at the altar and believe him that he's got it. Then you got to get up and give him a praise. Can you do on the count of three? Jump up and give him a praise. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a praise. Forget about your sickness. Forget about your heartache. Forget about whatever it is you're going through and give him what's due him. Hallelujah. What I love about him, you can give him a praise today and don't even let your past hold you in captivity. Why? Because you pass through. Y'all can sit down. Ain't that a blessing? I'm happy because I passed through. I was a crackhead, but I passed through. I was a drug addict, but I passed through. I was a whoremonger, but I passed through. I was a liar, but I passed through. I was, oh, come on, somebody. All of y'all could say amen to one of them. And some of you, all of them. What do you mean, Bishop, I pass through? Aren't you here? <laughs> Ain't that something? Aren't you here? Now the testimony is he didn't have to do it. Uh, it wasn't nothing about you that made him do it. It wasn't, wasn't nothing special about you that made him do it. You could have died like the other woman did, like the other girl did, like the other man did. But every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Somebody say me. Little old me. Have you ever just called yourself a nobody? Huh? Anybody's ever called yourself a nothing? But can you for today think he blessed nothing? When you feel like you are nothing, just go back to the very beginning of time. He specializes in nothing because when he saw there was nothing, he said, let there be and. Boy. I'm glad I wouldn't be here preaching today. If he didn't specialize in, in nothing, I was somebody they say it wasn't going to be nothing. Anybody else out there? But look at who you are. Because you passed through it. See, it's all right to go into a trial, but you got to keep passing. It's all right to have your heart broken, but you got to keep passing. Ain't that something? This body don't feel good a lot of times, but you got to keep passing through. People say, talk about it. Why? Why am I going to sit out here and talk about something that I'm passing through? Because when you passing through, you're so busy passing through it, you ain't got time to sit down and talk about it. Now the thing is, when I get out of it, I'll turn back and say, my soul looks back and wonder. Then I'll be able to tell you I know how I got over. If it had not been for him. On my side. There's nothing that you're going through right now that he's not going to let you pass through it. Now he's not going to drag you through it. See, this is what you don't understand. You, 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 you tell him he's going to bring me out, but you got it in mind that he's going to drag you out. Nah, no ma'am, no sir. He's not going to drag you out. You got to go through this. Every prophet had to go through Gilead. Gilead was purposely designed to be a rough and rocky terrain. It was deadly snakes and no food, no water, a desert. Rocks, they said, were sharp as razors. 
But in order for them to get to the promised land, they had to travel through Gilead. It's just something about going through hell that makes you appreciate heaven. Hallelujah. It's some of our tears that won't stop falling that will make you have a testimony. I get joy when I think about it. Y'all don't know joy when you think about don't mean that the tears ain't flowing. That the heart ain't broke, but the joy is when you think about him. Just get happy. The tears are flowing, but up glory. The heart is still broke. We done got too big for our own britches. Have y'all ever heard that? You're too big for your own britches. That means you done became arrogant people. Nose in the air. You're all looking pious. Hallelujah. Glory. He's wonderful. And I wish I could gurgitate on you. Because the reality is I done been through so much hell. Yes, sir. The rug been pulled from under me so tough that I ain't got time to be cute. That's right. That's true. Hey, man, I, you look, you're looking at a man that has dressed from one end to the other. I know what clothes is from head to toe, but I can preach the hell out of you in some blue jeans and tennis shoes. Because one thing about it is what I look like on the outer perimeter is not what's going on on the inner. Hallelujah. We're talking about holding. Holding to the standard. Come on. I know y'all ready to go. But y'all know this is Sabbath. I'll drink to that. Pass through. Pass through the gates. Wait a minute, you pass through the gates. Pass through the gates. And you got to understand the gates can sometimes be closed. But he's allowing us to pass through the gates. Oh, help us. Boy, 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 boy. I look at some of y'all attitudes. Y'all think. Y'all get attitudes out of nowhere. Have you ever realized that? Come on, sir. Those are gates. Those are gates. Those are your gates. Let me tell you something about reality. I can look at you and you can appear to serve me. But I can look at you when you don't know I'm watching. And the real look on your face will tell whether you really want to serve me or not. I do that with some of y'all. Because in my face, oh, bishop, bishop, bishop. But that ain't what I'm interested in. If I'm sick, I want to know somebody really want to take care of me. And won't get tired. Because the truth of the matter is, if you got sick, I'm going to take care of you. Anybody know that? Yes, sir. Amen. And we got to be careful with those things on our face that says, oh, I'm sick of this. Yeah. Because those are enemies. They are in pursuit of your standard. This morning I heard Farrakhan talk about It wasn't jealousy. It was envy. And how Judas was envious of Yahshua. Not jealous, he said, but envious. I thought they were one of the same, but they're not. And he used the scenario of how the woman put ointment in her hair and washed the feet of Yahshua. How Judas stood there and said, in other words, you foolish woman, we could have used that ointment and sold it and gave it to the poor. When he really had no intent of the poor. 
He was just upset that this woman put the ointment on her hair to wash the feet of Yahshua the Messiah. It wasn't even about. I guess this is where the jealousy and the envy comes in. Because he wasn't jealous of Yahshua. He just wanted what Yahshua had. Don't want what I have unless you're willing to pay the price for the way I got it. And the price is being. And I'm yet still paying the price. Hallelujah. Read Elder Cook because I got to go to 2 Timothy. Prepare the way for the people. Wait a minute. Prepare the way. Now we're going through the gate. Am I right about it? The prophet now is going through the gate preparing the way for the people. If you're not under the prophet, you won't have the way prepared. What church you belong to? I don't belong to any church. Well, you really should be. You should be under a prophet. And I'm going to tell you the truth. Don't go join no Sunday service. Because that ain't the will of the Father. I know people don't like me saying that. I'm trying to be nice. I've done good without going there, and I'm not going to go there too far. Hallelujah. But the truth, anyway, the truth of the matter is, the Sabbath is the day. Not Bishop David's day, but his day. And he said, remember it. Keep it holy. Now, I got to tell you Sabbath keepers that belong here. Whenever you allow your flesh to take over uh -huh. on the Sabbath, you've polluted it. Yeah. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I want to say, oh, my leg hurt. Uh -huh. <clears throat> but I think about it being the Sabbath. And I say, oh, shh, ain't no need to talk about that. This is his day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if y'all don't see nothing else, you better see the healing. Yes. Yes. Now, y'all may not be healed, but I'm being healed. Yes. Why? Because he's a healer. Yes. I'm proud to let you know I ain't took no blood pressure pill in almost two and a half months. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Not one. And I was on two, analotapine and Lasark. But I had to move by faith. Yeah. Because if I listen to everybody, you sure your blood pressure is down? In the midst of battle, you got to be careful who you incorporate yourself around. Because some so-called people will make you give up to the enemy. Because it's an easier task. How you feel, how in the hell you think I should feel? I feel good. You better be careful. You know, you're not supposed to just come off your blood pressure pill. Well, you better be careful. You're not supposed to not trust the Father either. And my holistic doctor, she was taking me every other day. Every other day. I didn't know I was coming off either. I didn't plan to come off. But she said, take it every other day because I don't want to interfere with your prescription, man. But every day that Elder Scott took my blood pressure, it was perfect. And if it's perfect, there's no need to take the blood pressure. The next day, it was perfect. Before I realized it, I forgot to take the blood pressure. Then my mind looked back and wondered, how long has it been? Now, you've got to be careful because people sit around and they're jealous. And they have no reason to be because it's a fight. 
anything come from the Father is a battle. Your joy is a battle. Your peace is a battle. Your healing is a battle. And the reason why we take prescription medicine is because it's a quick fix. And it don't fix nothing at all. Now, I'm not telling you don't take them. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying we are quick to want something that fixes it now. When the word said, wait on the Father. I don't think it wasn't rough for me waiting. And now I'm working on something else. Hallelujah. Now, don't sit around and say, and I wish it was me. I had to lose weight. I wasn't even big either. I thought I was, I, but I lost it. Then I got scared when I lost it. I said, dummy, what's wrong with you? This is a process. And if by chance the father is going to take me, be it known, ain't nothing none of us can do about it. Oh, y'all don't want to hear. The reality is we can all stand around your bedside and pray into heaven get the news. And you still leave up out of here. Amen. Some people live to be 80 and 90 years old, and some people, they do it until their time is up. When your time is up, it is just up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got to get through this message here. Build up. Build up the highway. Wait a minute. Build up the highway. Now, your mission is when you come to the truth and the prophet didn't open the gate and you passing through, you got to build up the highway. The highway is the level of your consciousness. You got to build up your highway. I saw Sister Whitney pulling out the little cart, whatever that cart is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The grab and go car. She didn't even know I was looking at her. But she was just as excited about getting the little grab and go car. Because she's working in her church. It's about when you put yourself into the house of prayer. I'm not talking about just being around here visiting. Visitors come and go. But when you get yourself involved. It becomes a part of you, and you become a part of it. (coughs) Come on, let's hurry up. Take out the stones. Take out the stones. We got to take out the stones. Can I hear y'all say, take out the stones? Take out the stones. Now, you got to take out the stones. Now, you're looking for me to take them out. I can only uh, uh, get them stirred up, but you got to take them out. What is the stones? Your past. Your hurts, your pride, your negatives, you can't shuffle shuffle them around. You got to take them out. Ain't that right? You got to take them out, Ashley. Because if not, they'll always be juggling around in your praise. Your past will always be there. You will never be free to give him a praise for real. Because it will always be something in you that will remind you of where you come from. I remember I remember you when. Yeah, I remember you too when. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't let nobody put me down. And anybody that's really under my tutelage, you don't let nobody put them down. Because we are somebody. Who are y'all? We are the Hebrew Pentecostals. 
We are the chosen generation. We are a holy nation. We are the people of promise. And the promise is? That's what it is. Hallelujah. Are you through? Come on, read. Take out the stones. Take out the stones. Lift up a standard. Wait a minute. Take the out the stones yeah. and then lift up a standard. For the people. Take out the stones and lift up a standard. Take out the stones and lift up a standard. Yeah. You can't lift up a standard with stones there. That's right. yes, sir. It's too much weight. Mama. It's too much pressure. Yes, sir. My mama said I wasn't going to be nothing body. Take out the stones. They said I wasn't going to be nothing. Take out the stone. And I tell you where you need to go. Everybody hates for you, especially when they try to dog you out. Anybody, people, your family, friends, dog you out. You know why? Because you ain't got to me yet. If you get to Bishop Herman Davis, they gonna, that's when they're going to want you to go to their church. Come and go with me. Politely. <laughs> That's all you do. Just give them a, a high five wave. Stretch out on them. When I was lost, you didn't come to rescue me. When I was down, you didn't come to see about me. So now all of a sudden, you want me to go to church with you. Huh? And I found my house. My house took me in with me being dirty, with me being filthy, with me being ugly, not knowing which way to go. And I met a man that put something in me that told me I'm worth something. Hallelujah. If I don't do nothing else in this house of prayer, I put it in each and every one of you that you are worth something. And don't let nobody, whether you're a man or a woman, take that from you. need no man to tell you you worth something and you don't need a woman to tell you you worth something if you got up this morning and looked in the mirror and know who he is you're worth something bless his holy name ain't that all right that's why we got members that don't even live in the city because they wanted to be a part of something that makes them worth something. Yes, Go ahead, churches, throw your trash my way. Come on now. I'll take it. Oh, yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'll take it because I was a trash myself. Oh, then I became a trash man. Yeah. Then I became a trash collector. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then I became the, the one that was able to rehabilitate. Take your trash and make the treasure out of it. Is it Gail? Child, look at her. Praise him, baby. She's saying praise him. Where are you going, church? Girl, this is Saturday. I know you party on Saturday. Well, you knew I used to party. Some kind of way you went to sleep, but I stayed up. And while I stayed up, he delivered me from Saturday, and you remained sleeping. Ain't that right? That's something, Namarion. Ain't it a blessing how other people can sleep and think you sleeping with them, and the Father delivers you and let them sleep on. Is there anybody in here like that? Yeah, just look at yourself. <laughs> First Timothy, Second Timothy, the second letter of Paul to Timothy. Now Timothy's a young brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Timothy, the first chapter, starting at the first verse. Now I don't know how far I'm gonna get with this. Shaw, 
Paul, an apostle of Yahshua, Yahshua Messiah. An apostle of Yahshua the Messiah. Now we know Yahshua is our brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> By the will of Yahweh, according to Nothing the... Nothing is being done out of the will of Yahweh. So everything we do and everything that we do must be done by the will of Yahweh. You can't make it without him. You cannot make it without him. Tell Elder Cook I'm going to need a handkerchief because I'm a, a two of them. I'm going to give that brother and sister Gail one. According to the promise of life, which is in Yahshua Wait Messiah. According to the promise of life. Somebody say life. Life. Now that's why you're here today. Amen. To live. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People think living is when you got a whole lot of money. Mm -mm. You could be just as dead with a lot of money Amen. as you can with no money at all. What is life? It's not that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Life is the word. Hallelujah. Read. To Timothy, dearly beloved son. Dearly beloved son. Love, mercy, and peace. From Yahweh the Father and Yahshua Messiah our King. Look at Paul giving salutations from the Father himself and the Son. Now you know that's a bad man. I can speak on behalf of the Father and the Son. That's why you need the prophet to open the gates to allow you to pass through. You can't do it. Put your hands together and give him a praise. Hallelujah. I'm going to pick this back up next week. Amen. Y'all can read 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1 through 14. And be ready for me next week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we're talking about holding to a standard. Can you tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. it is important, it is important that, we that we hold to our standard. To our standard. Father in your name, Father in your name, for I just want to thank you in thy prayer. Jesus name put your hands together and give him a praise hallelujah, hallelujah.